Today we're gonna to do a prescribed burn and Jeff is currently running the perimeter of the field with a disc and breaking up this, uh, this fire break to expo expose some more soil. We've got a cool season strip of clovers that are just coming out of the ground with the sun right now. Out beyond that, this field is completely surrounded by fire breaks. Um, Jamie implemented this plan along with the tree planting program behind us here of some hardwoods to just create better wildlife habitat on this farm. Took it out of row crop production here in Indiana and put it into a, uh, a warm season grass stand. And he's got a couple blocks here that we've, he's doing rotations on. He's burning one one year and leaving the other. And this one is due for a burn this year based on the management program that the uh, local NRCS office has prescribed. Converting dead duff and foreign material and weeds, th th this thing's gonna do several things. A fire will eliminate the dead tops convert that energy back into the soil. It will expose the soil, which when warmed by the sun, will allow the grasses that we want to uh, in, encourage to grow, flush out of the ground really quickly because the soil will warm quicker because of the warming sun and this, this stand of grass that he's really managing for will, will thrive because of the fire. It's a great management tool. We're at the north end of this particular block that we're burning. You see the cool season clover break and then the outer disc perimeter that we've got as a, as a fire break. We've got a south wind today, so we've lit a, um, a backfire here on the north end and it's moving really slowly because the wind is working against it. Now that we've got a safe margin of blacked out ground that's been burned, we're gonna walk around down here to the south end now and start what's called a head fire get it lit and you'll see the difference in that wind gets with that. And we have a really light wind, maybe two miles an hour, but it's gonna, it'll really help push that fire and, and increase the, the temperature of the fire as the oxygen hits it, really get it going this way. And these two will meet at some point and be, it'll be done. You can see we've had a really good result. Everything just converted to ash now. We've got bare soil here. We've got a really good complete burn. There's a few clumps. Some of these uh, young saplings that, that we're starting up in here. Hopefully we got a fire hot enough to boil the sap in those little trees to kill them. Some of this brush that was starting in here. This particular field hadn't been burned in four years. But what we're after here is converting all this loose, dead top uh, duff material, converting it back into these nutrients that will return to the soil. Again, we've exposed the ground. The first rain, all this ash is gonna convert. It'll just look like a chalkboard out here and then you'll see bare dirt. And within a week of warm sunshine, these warm season grass sprouts will be coming up out of the clumps. The seed that was in here that was uh, from the last couple years of the, of the leaves, excuse me, of the life cycle of the, of the grass that puts the seed head on, it gets scarified by the fire which allows it to be primed for germination so we get continued seed adding to the soil to fill in the gaps. Just a great all around, really a healthy exercise for managing a stand of warm season grasses to eliminate the competition, reduce material that's choking out the grass from doing its best, exposing sunlight, and getting it off and running for this spring. This is gonna be an awesome stand this year. This is a really cool example of when you talk about a warm season grass, it's, it's called a bunch grass for this exact reason. It grows in these small circular patterns or, or, or shapes rather. And you can see here's a, another one right next to it. You don't notice that when the tops are all full and five and six feet tall, but what's really, when you think about it in terms of wildlife and how they utilize these fields, quail, rabbits, turkeys, small game, even, even, even deer, larger game too, there are these gaps between plants that you don't see ground level allows the, the wildlife to walk right through here as a tunnel system when they're actually navigating through these fields like this. Rather than a sod grass, you have these bunch grass family groups of, of plant, a plant community here. Awesome, awesome habitat for wildlife. <laughs> 